All right, so the first thing you got to do is go into Preferences, go to the MIDI Sync tab, and turn the remote switch on for your MIDI controller. So that's going to be under the input section. Just turn that switch on. You're all set under there. And then you just need to get into MIDI mapping mode by cl clicking the uh, MIDI button. Now all you got to do is just click on the parameter you want to control, and then just turn the knob or hit the pad or whatever you want to control it with on your MIDI controller, and it's, and it's mapped for you. That's it. Now when you get out of here, you have control over that. All right, and you can do that for basically all the transport controls, anything you want to control within live. Basically everything you see, let me minimize this, everything you see in purple can be assigned to a MIDI controller. All right, so that's that. And then you can also use key mode to assign different functions to keys on your keyboard. So once you're done setting up all your MIDI and key mapping, go into Options, Preferences, click on the file folder tab and save current set as template that'll make it so all this mapping is remembered for all your new projects so there's a lot of stuff in live that can't be assigned to a MIDI controller stuff like save or undo for example but both of those have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them like save is control s undo is control z and we can use a third party program I'm using Bomi's MIDI translator and what this lets us do is take a MIDI signal from a MIDI controller and translates that into a keystroke that Live can recognize. So I have a couple set up. You see save here for with control S, undo, control Z. The first thing you got to do is set up your MIDI controller to use with this program. So go to MIDI in and then find your MIDI controller or the port that it's connected to and select that and then go to add name the translator so I'm going to call this one switch and then go to edit click on the incoming tab click the option to capture MIDI and then just hit the pad or button or whatever that you want to control it with and then go to outgoing choose the option for keystroke you gotta select this box for enter tab and backspace then we're gonna hit tab apply close I'll minimize this program and now I'll be able to switch between the two and it's that simple You can get more complex with your keystrokes. For example, the term record quantize on the 16th notes in live, you got to go Alt E to get in the edit menu, 22 down arrows, one arrow to the right, five more down arrows, and then enter. But that could be mapped to a, in a translator. So I have both quantize on the 16th notes and quantize off mapped here. So there really is no limit to the length of the keystrokes that you can use. All right, the other good thing about this program is that it recognizes more types of MIDI signals than Live does. So, for example, like switching scenes on the pad control sends out a SysX message. Live doesn't recognize that, but this does. So what I did is like right here, this is the message that gets sent out when you switch to scene 2 on the pad control. I have that mapped to the number 2 on the keyboard. Then in Live, in key mapping mode, I have track select for number, track number 2 assigned to number the number 2 and I have track arm assigned to the number two. So now when I switch to scene two on my pad control, it selects an arm to track number two in live. And the same goes for all, any track that I have here in live. Alright, so the first thing you got to do is figure out which CCs your knobs are sending out on. And an easy way to do that is just go into MIDI mapping mode, click on a parameter, and then just turn your knob. And that will show you which CCs they're assigned to. Alright, so you need to go to your user remote script, which you're going to find in uh, Documents and Settings, under your name or owner, Application Data, Ableton, Live, Preferences, User Remote Scripts. Alright, so this is the blank user configuration. This is what you need to fill in. Alright, but don't change this one. What you're going to do is create a new folder and you're going to give it the name of your controller. So I'm going to call this one Z1. Then I'm going to take this user configuration file and copy it into the Z1 folder. Alright, now I can edit it. Alright, the easiest thing to do is to just leave your MIDI controller on channel 1. That makes setting this up a lot easier and you don't have to change as much. So I'm going to do that. And the first thing I need to change is the input name. I'm going to call that Z1, the same name as my folder. Output name is the same. And then for in these are the eight 
eight knobs, the encoders. So I need to just plug in the numbers that I got. Whoops. To switch to the different banks of knobs, you have to you have two different options for doing that. You can either use a separate button for each bank, or you can use a bank next and previous bank, so bank up and bank down basically. I'm going to use a knob for each one of these. Just makes it easier on that controller. So I'm going to put these in. Alright, and when you're done setting everything up, you just need to save this file. The easiest thing to do, I think, is just close it and then just hit enter and it's saved for you. Alright, so now when you go back into live, go to options, preferences, click on the MIDI sync tab, and the drop down menu for control services will have your controller listed now. So select that and the input it's connected to. And then you're all set in there. I'm going to just stick this in a full screen mode. And now I can just click on this device. See this little purple hand? That shows that I'm controlling it now. All right. And um, that's impulse. You can use this to control like third party devices too. So here's a copy of uh, Vanguard. And I can control that as well. I'm turning it on and off, and then I can control the other stuff. All right. And I can switch banks of knobs too. So here's bank two, and now I'm controlling like the filter. Now the envelope. And, you know, there's eight banks to control it with, so. Alright, so right now Vanguard is set up for instant mapping. If I switch over to Scene 2 on the pad control, that selects an ARMS Track 2, but it doesn't select Impulse for auto mapping. I'm sorry, for instant mapping. In order to do that, I need to go Alt, Up, Down. And now the device is set up. And I, I would remap that, but the problem with that is if I have a third party plugin loaded, like I do on this track, that doesn't work. Alt, Up, Down doesn't work. You actually have to use a mouse movement to do that, and then click on it. Sync. Alright, so when you install Auto Hotkey, you get a bunch of little programs with it. Go to the one called Windows Spy, and this is going to track your mouse movement. Just move your cursor wherever you want it on the screen. I want mine right about here. And then you just need to Alt-Shift-Tab to get back to this program, so you can copy the coordinates. I want these coordinates right here. So I'm going to copy those, Control c and then go to Notepad. I'm just going to copy those coordinates in. All right, so I can close this program now. And now I just need to create my script. All right, so the first thing I need to do is, is tell it, I want the mouse cursor to be exactly where it was on the screen. So I, I need to do Coord Mode Mouse. All right, if I didn't do that, my mouse position would be relative to the window that it was in, and I don't want that. All right, the next thing I need to do is set up a keystroke to assign that to. So I want that to be on control 6. This symbol right here is the symbol for control and then 6. So when I press control 6, the mouse is going to do this movement. And control 6, colon, colon, that means every time I press control 6, do this function. And the function I want it to do is click at these coordinates. And that's a left mouse click at these coordinates. All right, so that's done. So to go, I need to go to file, save as, and I'm going to name this test. And now I have to put dot AHK, that's the auto hotkey extension. You have to put that on all your scripts. Dot AHK and then save. So I can close this. Now I can go back to my desktop. Double click on this, it opens in the system tray. And now we can test it out. So if I hit Control 6, it does what it needs to do. And I use MIDI Translator to map that to a button on the MIDI controller here. So that's that.